editor of Glamour, and I am here with the one and only Jennifer Fisher. If you like stacking bold cuffs, shiny gold chokers, and badass multi-finger rings, then you're familiar with Jennifer's jewelry. Actually, you probably pine for it along with celebrity fans like Rihanna, Rita Ora, and Kendall Jenner. With accolades up the wazoo and an insanely huge social media following, Jennifer has also been ushered into fashion's highest echelons with her first CFDA nomination this year. But as you saw in the video, The Making of Me presented by Clinique, Jen's life wasn't always all photo shoots and gems. Before she began her jewelry company, she was diagnosed with a desmoid tumor. Fighter that she is, she battled against all the odds to beat it and gave birth to her two gorgeous children who inspired her to design her first piece of jewelry. So without further ado, welcome Jennifer Fisher. Thank you, Sophia. Thanks for having me today. We love having you. Um, Jen and I are actually very old friends and it is such a pleasure to be talking with you and, and celebrating you. So in the making of me, you, you tell your personal story which is filled with highs and lows. Why is it important for you to, to tell that story? I mean, it's my life. I mean, it's sort of how I got to where I am now. And I think, you know, there was a lot of, um, there are a lot of things that I had to go through in order to, um, you know, sort of create the business. And, and there, there's a story behind it. And it's not like just one day I decided I wanted to do this and I started a jewelry company. There's a lot behind it. And I, I thought it was really important to share, you know, what I had been through to also, you know, maybe help other women that are going through something similar. Um, and Because I remember, you know, in the dark days, not really knowing what was going to happen and where my life would be at the end. And and I think, you know, if you, you look for other people to see their experiences to sort of help you through some of those tough times. So if I can do that for somebody, then that's, that's you know, incredible. For, you know, I, I, I would love that. Because I feel like I, when I was going through it, I was sort of looking for other women and to hear their stories. In that time, there wasn't a ton of social media there wasn't a lot out there to really, you know, hear other people's stories. So um, I felt really honored and lucky to be able to share it. And it's interesting. I'm wearing a bunch of your pieces, as I as I do a lot, because they're yeah. pieces that you live in. It's interesting that you pick jewelry because it's such a it's such a permanent thing, and it it, it outlasts us. So why do you, why do you think you chose jewelry to design? Well, I mean, I started the company after the birth of my son Shane because I wanted something to wear to represent him that felt uh, bespoke, and I, I didn't want to be wearing the same thing that every other girl was wearing if they just went to some store and purchased. I wanted something with its full name, and I wanted something that was specific to my sense of style. And so that was a dog tag on a really long gold chain, and really no one was kind of wearing jewelry like that at the time, especially personalized jewelry like that. Um, and so I started wearing it, and people started, you know, asking me on the street, "Where did you get that? Can I make, you know, can you make that for my, you know, so and so?" And it's just sort of sort of the snowball after that. Um, I never intended on making jewelry. I mean, I didn't realize it was sort of ingrained in my being because of watching my grandfather when I was a child, who was a silversmith in his spare time. Um, and I would watch him for hours make amazing Western silver jewelry. Um, so I, I guess it was just, it's just part of me. Um, so tell, uh, what was the most unexpected part of starting your business? Oh gosh, there's so many unexpected things. Um, I mean, being a mother, first of all, and um, you know, running your own company and starting your own business is, has um, you know many of its own challenges. Um, also, just you know, um, having any kind, you know, getting involved in the fashion world. You know, there's a lot of ins and outs and things that you know you don't really know about getting into it. So you know, it's it's been a really interesting learning curve, um, and you learn a lot. You make a lot of mistakes, but you just have to kind of keep going and learn from those mistakes. It sort of makes you who you are and your company you know, stronger by going through a lot of those, you know, different challenges. Cool. So tell me about some of your style icons. Who do you look to? Who inspires you? It's so funny you're saying that because she was in here the other day. Um, Tani Goodman. Oh. My, like, I, I love her style is, like, perfect American. Like, I just, I love her so much. And she's also been a huge supporter of my company. And I met her going through the Vogue CFJ Fashion Fund. And, She's just an amazing woman. And I, I would say before that, it was more like a Kate Moss kind of a thing. And, and even before that, more of like a Diana Reeling, Reeling kind of a thing. But now, and I kind of went more rock and roll, and now I sort of cleaned up a little bit. And so now, right now, I'm like channeling my inner Tawny. She's my spirit blouse. <laughs> <laughs> the other day, we were talking, about, <laughs> we were talking about how to wear white jeans in the fall. And the quote that I gave was that if Tawny Goodman does it, I can do it. <laughs> Exactly. She's so cool. Um, 
So tell so you have big news this fall. You're opening your first boutique. Tell us about it. It's been really, oh God, it's been such a long road. It's been so amazing. We're here now. This is my office inside the back of the store. So we're sort of in the inner bowels back here now. Um, but we've moved everything to our flagship location on Fifth Avenue in the Flatiron. Um, and it's been pretty incredible. I mean, for years we've been selling jewelry out of our showroom space, which is really, you know, it was our tiny offices in Soho. And it, just, it sort of got to the point where people were like, when are you opening a store? When are you opening a store? We want more people to be able to come in and buy your jewelry. And so it was sort of a natural progression for us to, to now you know, open our first retail flagship. And um, it's been really exciting. The design process has been incredible. One of my um, dearest friends, Michelle Gerson, helped me with the interiors. And we did a really cool lighting design with Apparatus Studios and these beautiful floors by Wedwood Planks. And it's just it's been really a really fun a, a, like an alternate design challenge to go through to really kind of create this ideal space for our customers to come and shop. So I can't wait for everyone to come and visit. Can't wait. And I also feel like even just coming to your, your former showroom that it's very much about your energy is all about kind of hanging out, trying things on, um, and really spending some time with, with the jewelry that, that you're going to buy. Is that important to you? Very important. I mean, the women that come in here, they're designing these pieces that represent their lives, you know, for the, from the fine jewelry. You know, people can come in and purchase the Diffusion Collection and walk out with it. But, you know, a lot of the people are, are creating their customized pieces, which does take some time for us to actually create for them because it is custom. And so they're in here, you know, and they, I want them to have a space that feels safe but also very comfortable and never intimidating. That's the one thing that I... I hate about some retail experiences when people sort of intimidate you and you feel like you're pressured into buying something. That's something that I never want anyone to feel in here. So um, I just wanted to create a clean space to let the jewelry shine and let people really come in here and create their, you know, their lives on their wrist, chain, hands, whatever they want to do. It's cool, and I also love that kind of there's a message there, and, and it's what's the um, how do I ask this? But um, what is kind of the craziest or most touching, let's say, um, message that a customer wanted on their jewelry? Oh, I mean, there's so many. I can't even tell you. I mean, there's been so there's so much uh, so much people that want to represent and want to say on their jewelry, which is really interesting. You know, and, and it it's it's a way people uh, they represent you know, their challenges in their lives, that the, their accomplishments, the things that they love. So it's it's really a, I mean it's an intense, passionate sort of experience, you know. And these people come in here and they've got you know things written down, and it's it's they take a lot of time and effort into it. So you really want to make sure that you're honoring that for them. Um, but there's there isn't one. I mean, there's so many. I could can't even tell you. There's been like Celtic like crazy sayings, and you know people representing all kinds of animals, like some crazy things. Um, but also people you know people that have passed and. People, you know, new beginnings and things like that. So it's it's a really it's it's really nice that they allow us to be a part of that too. You feel really special that they chose us to create that and that they want to wear something from us. That that to me is the most is the most meaningful thing of all. Really cool. So tell us, what is your advice for young designers or really anyone with a big idea? I mean, I always say this to everyone. It's sort of like you know, just go and do it because I had no idea, you know. I started so many small businesses my whole life. I was sort of always an entrepreneur. You know, I started a you know button earring business with my babysitter when I was a child. I mean, I did all these crazy things, and and you know, you're never gonna know unless you try. You know, so you just have to kind of get out there and do it. And then, like the one thing I always say, you know, sort of like if one person tells you no, there's ton other people that are gonna tell you yes. So you can't get discouraged by you know people re rejection and people not liking your idea because I mean, there's I mean, how many millions of people are there in this world? Someone's gonna respond to what you're doing. Cool. So one of the things I especially love about you is following you on Instagram, and you post these awesome inspirational quotes. Um, do you have a favorite quote or a motto that you live by? Um, I, mean, I think the one that stands out is, is dreams don't work unless you do. You know, it's it's true. I mean, if you don't go out there and get it yourself, it's not going to happen for you. I mean, I'm I'm a big believer in that that you have to bring things to yourself. You know, and if you're if you can't just sit back and wait for things to happen, you have to get out there and do it. Amazing. Very cool. Jen, thank you so much for your time. As a close friend, I'm really inspired by your fearless resolve and your entrepreneurial spirit. But as a fashion editor, I continue to be amazed by each collection that you launch and the trends that you really single handedly start. So well done. Thank you so much. And stay tuned for upcoming Making of Me Google Hangouts in the next few weeks. Thank you for joining us. Thanks, Sophia. Bye.